Hello again, everyone out there. This is uh, Michael Ware, Chairman of the Iowa Firearms Coalition. I've got Board Member Pete Brownell with me from, uh, uh, you may also have heard of him as the former president of NRA. And uh, what are you with Brownells now? Not CEO <laughs> anymore, is it? I'm a leftover uh, boss, I think. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, you still putter around there a little bit, right? I do. I do. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So the question on everybody's mind right now is what's going on? Uh, with pistol braces, what's right. going on with pistols um, that are equipped with braces? Uh, they were legal yesterday. Are they going to be legal tomorrow? Or what's going on here with ATF and their proposals? Right. So give us your interpretation so we can understand what's going on here. Right, right, right. That's a good question. Um, we've had a couple of incidences where the ATF has come out a lot bolder than they have over the last two weeks, really, since the, since the Electoral College has come out and said, uh, Mr. Biden is now going to be... Um, presumptive president or president uh, in waiting here. So they've come out with the 80% interpretation or they're trying to do some, some dig in there on the 80% pistols. But the issue that's really gotten everybody excited is this brace. So this, this, this process that the ATF is following is, here's what we think we're going to use to judge whether the combination of a brace on your AR pistol will, will make it an SBR or not doesn't give us any any real specifics. It says stuff like, it's gotta be a brace, it's gotta be shorter than 16 inches, and we'll consider the optic that's on there. We'll consider the the weight, the caliber, we'll consider the caliber. What else does it say? We'll consider the, um, boy, I don't even know, I was gonna say color, but maybe. But they have, they give us this criteria that they're they're trying to, to use when they when they when an agent in the field or when you uh, send in this this configuration you want to build when you send it in to say is this an SBR or not which is a um, short barreled rifle is this a short barreled rifle or not which means it's a uh, it falls in the machine gun category I think most of your listeners know the NFA. the NFA segment so is this going to be something that is a, a illegal to own or can I own this configuration as just Mr. Regular Citizen without any extra steps to go through? So they only give us a criteria. It doesn't say the braces are illegal. It says the combination of the brace with all these other factors, and they give you a list of the factors they're considering, could make it an SBR. Doesn't tell us, well, is it a fizzle? Is two two three okay or is nine millimeter gonna do it? Is it uh, you know, 15 and a half, 16. I mean, what are these things? Is it a, is it going to be, um, if I've got a big magnifying optic on there, a night vision or night optics or night, night sights, does that make it an SBR or not? There's no criteria around it. It's, it's ambiguous today. There's always agents who say these things shouldn't be around. There's, we say, yes, they should. Cause here it's, it's not a rifle. It's a pistol. What the, the ATF has not given us any clarity at all. No. They don't. I, I read down through there, Pete, and I don't understand. Let's just and, say, go ahead, go ahead. Well, so here's the thing. There's, there's no clarity around this, so there's no outlawing of the brace, but we're not gonna tell you what makes it, what combination makes it illegal. So we'll have the right to adjust what our interpretations are right. in the future. So we right. can say, so today we're not gonna take we're not going to say nine millimeter, but if if tomorrow the president to be, if Biden comes down, who doesn't know? He doesn't know an AR-14 from an AR-15, so he doesn't know what a brace is. Wouldn't know, expect that at all. If he comes in and says, "Look, get rid of all these things to your fullest extent of the law," if we don't have clarity around what makes it an SBR or not, we're not going to know until the ATF comes knocking if we have followed the law or not. We all, we're all of us, I'm sure all of us are law abiding citizens. We want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Right now we've got, we're following the law. But what ATF is doing is putting ambiguity around this interpretation so they can adjust what that law is in the future. And you may not know until it's too late. And your options are, here's where your options are. You can register that firearm with the NFA, which means send it in for interpretation and we'll give you back your firearm with an interpretation or we'll hang on to it until you pay your tax or you tell, well, it's tax free. 
right now. You can uh, dispose of it or um, you can turn it in. So dispose of it, cut it up, or you can turn it in. You have basically three or, uh, well, you'll be a felon if you don't, if you don't do anything. So they're making, they're giving you an option. And if you don't do this, it's, there's up to 10 years or 10 and or $10,000 and you're a felon, you're a federal felon. So you're facing some significant uh, headwinds on this. It's not that we can push back and say, hey, this is, this is you may have to believe this, this is uh, not right. You can keep that one. Okay. <laughs> Had to step over that one. This is not right. We don't want it. That's not what we're being asked. They're, they're saying, here's how we judge. So, so we're going to comment. Yeah. Okay. So let me regurgitate this back to you. So, so I make sure that I understand this correctly. I, I buy parts, assemble a weapon, whatever else, or I go buy a pistol and then I equip it with a brace or whatever else. And they're saying that I'm obligated to send this thing to them. I bought a free and clear pistols of Title One firearm, blah, 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 blah. There's this accessory is not illegal. It's not inappropriate. I put these things together, whatever else, and I sent it to them and they have my property. And then after they have it, they'll determine whether they think that it's an NFA item or not. And obviously if they decide that it's not, then there's a cost associated with this. I'm sure shipping it there, whatever back I, the logistics, the time, whether that, I mean, come on with as popular as these things are, if everybody yeah. adhere to this, I mean, they could have it months, years, whatever, but that aside, once they have this thing, if they make the determination that they believe that things in an NFA item, so it either goes on the registry and whether there's a cost associated with, with a tax stamp or not, it's on the registry and I have to adhere to that or capitulate to that. Or if I say no, then they say, well, okay, um, uh, you're a felon. Or if I say, I don't want to have anything to do with this, then they just keep it. Is that what yes. you're telling me that this says? There's, there's, they have the option to do that. If the future administration wants to put the, a very aggressive approach to this segment, this type of these types of rules allow ATF to make that determination just how aggressive they're going to apply those interpretations. Can you imagine for one minute if this was done with anything else? If somebody said to you, Pete, um, send me your Bible, I'm going to look through it, I'm going to check it out, I'm going to decide whether I think that this is a legitimate uh, form of worship or not. We'll get back to you. Know, oh, by the way, it might be, but if it's not, we got to do this to you. And if you don't like it, uh, now you're a felon. I mean, can you imagine if you did that with, with something else that was sacred? Besides any other civil rights? right. Any, any other civil right. Right. Any other human right. If you toyed with it or monkey did it in this way, I really don't know what would happen next, but I can assure you it would not be good. No, there's this type of ambiguity in any kind of interpretation of the law adds to, uh, significant conflict because it can be abused. It can absolutely be abused. And it all comes down to how this gets enforced. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, if this is inevitable and I don't want to capitulate that it is, I'd love to push back and say, you guys are, don't even have the jurisdiction, but they do have ATF does have some, some regulatory uh, authority to make determinations of what and definitions of firearms, definition of firearm parts. But if it's not, if this rule is left to be ambiguous, they can reinterpret this, yeah. what a definition is, what an accessory is, mm -hmm. uh, to, if, to fit the political agenda of the uh, current administration, which Biden has said that, man, he's, he's going to take away our AR-14s, AR-15s. Uh, if you want to scare off a, guy, a bad guy, just two shots of your shotgun in the air. I mean, he has given a some shotgun. horrible... Just horrible it. advice on self-defense, right? Yeah. So he doesn't know what he's talking about. So this whole thing this, is really bothering to me, Pete. And I'm yeah. going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. There are rules out there. ATF forever has had uh, definitions of what constitutes a pistol, uh, and I'm not a scholar on this, but I'm not aware of it being changed very often, if ever. 
So they have said a pistol is this and it falls in this category if it does. Uh, a rifle is this and it falls in that category if, if it's in that criteria. So what's happened is the industry, industry has innovated, individuals have innovated. They have said, okay, this is the criteria. I'm going to build something that falls within this guideline because, oh, by the way, you said that that's what this criteria and this, and this definition was. I'm going to build something that falls within it. And then ATF rolls up afterwards and like, hmm, I don't know. Those guys look like they're having too much fun. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is they think. But, but do you see what I'm saying? There are rules and we adhere to them. And then all of a sudden, well, we need to change the rules because we don't like that anymore. So when these guys do this stuff and these things happen, I'm worried about not just this that we see in front of us, but the precedence that it sets to go take something else where they say, well, we really haven't liked those AR-14s for a while. We probably better do something about that. Uh, either that or um, since we're monkeying with braces, which are accessories, what don't we like now? Well, we really haven't liked those high capacity clips. They, they're not good. I can see that stuff happening next. I mean, this is, these are big, big overreaching problems. You have uh, you have that potential from the redefined thing. Now, those some of those um, would need uh, new categories in the NFA uh, realm. If you're going to dump stuff into you know, it's not AOW. Was it uh, uh, otherwise identified weapons? Something like that. Yeah. It's tough. It'd be tough to put uh, AR-15 into the NFA item list without a new category there, but doesn't mean that that they're doing it the, right now i know they are there that doesn't mean that they won't try to make ambiguity around it to give them interpretive uh authority or or leeway as they move as we all move forward this is why some of the, the lawsuits that are out there right now that is that define the individual right to own firearms and regular capacity magazines is is the second a second amendment individual right it's important to stay stay uh vigilant on this as we always have been and probably from everybody listening you've been pretty vigilant on what our individual rights are and we understand what that slippery slope is this is stuff that's that's a uh it's an early it's a signal it's an early signal even before the current president before trump's out it's an early signal i'm willing to work with you new president this is you know by the way atf atf um sends signals out every time there's a shift in power we had when trump was coming in uh, there was a, a second, uh, the uh, COO of the ATF, who was says, "Here's what I'm going to be doing for the fire mark," and we all cheered for it. So this is not, I don't think this is a, uh, I don't want to say it probably is coordinated, but it's not new. No, it's just not in our favor, right? right. It's always kind of happened, and these are the kinds of things that either the current administration or the current director she's trying to clean up, or something that's always been a burr under her saddle she's trying to. Uh, send signals that she's willing to work uh, with the new administration. The scary thing for me as we look at this is uh, how can, you know, uh, um, Biden said that he's willing to put AR-15s on into the NFA, and, and we all said, well, that's going to cost billions of dollars. Well, if you don't, don't uh, assess the tax, that takes that argument away, that financial burden away. But there's a problem with, with putting anything into the NFA and that's you've got to fill out that form four and send it into the government right now and this is this is lightning fast for the government which is two to three months and that's on a that's when they get a good pile in but there's there's four four to five million braces out there that that two to three months that we're used to now is on a really small number of items you you 100x the number of things going in without any funding We'll be six years, five, six years before we get any response back. They'd be swamped. Either that or administratively, they just can't. They just can't execute this. No, not only that, but it, it, then it becomes a a, a a plea to uh, to fund ATF further. Oh, we need more examiners. We need more people. We need a bigger budget. Well, right. That right. comes next. Right. And right. And so one. Good either. Yeah. So one good. So Georgia is so important because over the budget set. Uh, regardless of this, uh, if if we are on the wrong end of the stick on all these types of moves, and we lose Georgia, they could defund 
or not fund to the mat to to an operational efficiency level, yeah. the ATF, and we're stuck. So there, there's a lot of there's a lot of threads on this, and it's not just hey braces. I don't have a brace. I don't care. Uh, let them win that one. We got a bigger battle to fight. And uh, oh, by the way, when they when they come, I'm just going to say you know screw off. You're not going to take my guns. My cold dead hands move. Well, you're too long. You're too late. Yeah, you're too late when that gets there. So, so this 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 is not a no compromise uh, movement by pushing back on it's you guys have you guys got to be you guys being the ATF and the government you have to recognize you're you're overreaching some of your juris, your jurisdiction and what the citizens uh, that you're supposed to be governing and interpreting laws on you're o- you're overreaching and I certainly hope that they listen to the comments that we put put out there to the ATF on what kind of burden this is going to put on them. Yes, it, and on and on law-abiding citizens. I agree. It's a good pro. It's a good process to to engage in when when the ATF is really saying, "Hey, we're giving you the criteria. It's not illegal, but it's a criteria. Do you see any problems with these criteria we haven't thought about?" Yeah, it's a process they've got to do. Yeah, and yeah let's got a lot of problem with it. Yeah, let's get over the the. The pushback on, uh, I mean, it, it runs from, we don't need the ATF at all, too. The NFA is bad. To, um, all those types of all those types of responses that uh, anybody that's listening may have. When the when a process an ATF or an agency comes out and says, we're thinking of doing this, that's a polite way of saying, we're doing this unless you tell us we've missed something big. And, yeah, you guys are a bunch of, um, bad guys, or you don't know what you're doing, you go away. That's not going to influence them very much at all. Okay, so people it, it know, may, it may with this way, we got a lot of pushback, but the things that will influence them are how much is it costing citizens, how much is it going to cost them dollar wise, um, what's the time burden on this. Let's right. point out some of the obvious things that are just operationally problems. Okay, so so you know what you're talking about right now. I know what you're talking about right now. But people watching this might not understand exactly what you just said. So again, let me regurgitate it back to you So in layman's terms. So uh, for example, and this will be in the description of this video and, and a little follow it wherever it is you see it, whether this is Facebook, mm-hmm. YouTube, whatever else. And you'll have the information there that you can follow and use this. But for example, IFC is going to put up in their action center uh, a message that's going to go to the White House and to your, your U.S. representative and senator uh, saying, hey, here's the problem. Uh, here's how we see it. And this is what we want you to do about it. Now, and then we'll also include a narrative that you can use or copy and paste when you go to regulations.gov and we'll have a link for that so that you can weigh in directly in the comments period because ATF is saying, well, we're going to leave open for two weeks this comment period and you tell us how you interpret what we've offered you. So when people roll up and they put in this comment, um, ATF, you're a bunch of jackbooted thugs, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. But they take that basically and they weight it as if it were worth nothing. And they put it over here in a column that might as well be called trash because they've got a big Excel spreadsheet probably with a bunch of columns. And what they're going to need to see is something that's substantive uh, that shows them that, hey, there really is a problem with this that affects real people. And we want that column to be very tall and very long. So they recognize, yeah, this is a really lousy idea. And these are the specific reasons why, because we're gonna put these in these pockets and they're going to weight these responses appropriately. Is that what you're saying? That's a process, right. We, and we certainly hope that they listen uh, any regulatory body needs to post for comment, including your city council. Uh, being argumentative, while helpful to to show passion and commitment, is is not as impactful as unless you show up in mass. That definitely helps. But but we've got to show up in mass with substantive uh, pushback. I would also show up in mass and substantive up being upset as well. No, oh, yeah, that's not going to uh, be hard. No, it's not going to be hard. But, you know, the things that are going to really impact us as citizens, it's so ambiguous. We don't know if we're following the law or not. We just want to follow the law. Right. We certainly hope the law doesn't really impede upon our, our right to own firearms. And this one is leading it up to interpretation. Right. And, right. and that's not good. It, we could be felons today and we may not know it. 
it doesn't matter whether I take a new job or there's a new rule in the workplace or whatever it may be, as long as you give me a copy of the rule book, uh, in theory, I'm not saying that ATF do anything you want to me, I'm gonna like it and go along with it, but what I am saying is, in order for me to have a shot at adhering to the rule book, I gotta have a copy. You right. can't say, well, I don't know how to define an SBR, but I know when I'll see it, wrong. Wrong. Right. You can't right. do that. You can't do that to people. Uh, that's right. I. There's right. no way. There's no provision for that in our law. Right. And, and when it says ambiguous, then they're going to have to look at every combination. Right. That's four to five million firearms today. Today, they're going to be. They're going to be swamped. So there's a significant impact to the, my uh, my property will then be in, in this nowhere land. It's, they're gonna be swamped. They don't have the manpower right. to go through even the 250,000 uh, form forms they get in a year. They're gonna get, or whatever it is, I think it's less than that, 125,000. There's no way they can handle four to five million overnight. No, this is like me building, spending years building a hot rod with my dad or my son, and then hand it over to the DOT and say, take good care of it and let me know if it passes all your inspections uh, and uh, give me a call in four years when you're done with it. No, right. no, nobody is right. going to say yes to that, right. nor should they. No, they should, it's, it's, it's a process that, um, is a, I think it's a test. It's a test to see what kind of information they get. Uh, this uh, we're gonna we're gonna require you to make your best interpretation whether you're breaking the law or not, and then ask us for permission to own this product, and we'll tell you later. Uh, that's just it's just not how we should be doing commerce. How we should be interpreting laws. I said the laws. This is right or wrong. We should be a little clearer in this. A lot, a lot here. A lot more. Clarity needs to be had on this. So there's there's some problems here. And I would encourage us and through our action center to uh, yeah. leave comment. Okay. So, okay. So the action items here for people listening and watching are uh, go to follow those, these links, go to IFC's action center uh, and send your message. And that's going to go right. to the White House because this executive office uh, still obviously has purview over ATF, and I would like to see, I don't know if this is possible or not, but I would like to see the president phone up the ATF and say, hey, uh, I don't know what monkey shines are going on here, but they stop. Uh, I don't know if that can happen or not, or, or will happen or not, but that's what I'd like. Um, I think that our uh, House reps and our senators need to know that this kind of monkey shines going on because they need to understand that this agency with regulatory powers is routinely and often overstepping their boundaries. And these are the examples of how and why. Um, so these people need to know. However, ATF's comment period uh, is structured in such a fashion, we just can't generate those guys an email. You have to go to a certain place in a portal uh, and put in your information, uh, your personal information, and then uh, your comment. So we're going to give you instructions on, on how to reach that place and to do that. Uh, fill it out, obviously, if you choose. And then, uh, uh, like I said, a couple paragraphs that you can choose from or add to copy and paste in there or write your own email or write your own correspondence. So that's what we've got for action items. That's what we want to have people understand. Uh, that's what we want to have their engagements. That's what we want to have them do. Um, and uh, that's the ask. Uh, is there anything that I missed, Pete? No, you got it. That's that's what it is. Get involved, lean in on this one because it, it's the beginning of probably a couple more that we're going to have to push back on as we work through this next administration's reorganization of our rights. Dude, that's a phrase people should never have to utter or even hear. You know. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate sure. it, Pete. If there's nothing else, then we'll let everybody go. Uh, as always, everybody stay safe out there. And uh, I almost never put in a plug for membership. I probably should do that with every video, but the fact yeah. of the matter is um, we don't grow. We aren't able to work. We aren't able to do these things uh, well, without membership and their help and their engagement. So we appreciate that from you guys. Get out there and help us get this done. Take care. All right. Take care, everybody.